to all of you um this surubhi joshi is a final year student of uh, medicine at volgograd state medical university in russia so this place volgograd was also called stalingrad before right uh, so that has undergone a change uh, she is originally from indore in uh, madhya pradesh uh, who went to russia 6 years back for studying medicine today uh, she can speak russian and has adapted quite well to the russian culture as well now uh, let me hand over to surbi who will take us on a guided tour of russia and i'm sure uh, you will enjoy our session and if you have any questions on russia please feel free to ask uh, surbi so uh, over to you surbi start uh, first of all i would like to thanks uh, that he has given me this opportunity to tell something about russia and fortunately i have got lot of experiences good experiences by being in russia so if you know that russia is one of the largest country and it is a country with rich and diverse culture and it is influenced by its long history and vast geography so most of the time i will be presenting lots of pictures i don't want to bore any one of you by including lots of text so hopefully you guys enjoy so this is how russia looks and uh, it has got a vast land but the good part is that only the eastern part of russia is uh, very developed and it has got lots of cities like moscow st petersburg and stalingrad like the where i live and the eastern uh, the sorry the eastern part is mostly covered by lots of forest and uh, like it makes sure that the uh, species are preserved and on the right side you can see that this is a painting of the famous kremlin uh, building or the church which is in moscow and soon i will be sharing also the real photos of that then whenever there is word russia there comes lots of things in our mind first of all the kremlin as i said also also the bear are famous here the military is famous for self it consists of like white blue and red and sometimes we get confused with france and uh, russian flag then we have this matryoshka which is a popular doll like figure and this is what the traditional uh, outfit of old russians or slavic people used to look like we also have got some special instruments which we'll be talking about later and also about the food and the heritage of russia then uh, what do you know about russia what else do we know about russia so everyone knows that how notoriously russia is very cold country and the uh, weather generally it goes from like minus 66 or minus 17 few parts of country to even 40 degree 50 degree to some part of the country and also this is what the stamp looks like of russia in 2015 and uh, or about the food and about the bridges and all we will be talking about later then uh, these are also some of the stamps which are famous in russia and you can see here these are some letters and uh, how we call letters in english it is called as azbuka in uh, russian for letters or alphabets and the alphabets in russian are mostly the same but some of them are different as you can see here like this is sh and this is also sh but with a dash here so the pronunciation is different then uh, i think on my first meeting with arvin sir he also said that russia has a lots of time zones so even i did not know the figure exactly but around 11 time zones are there in russia so it can be from 7 am to 7 pm 9 am to 7 pm in the same country and also as i said that minus 77 is the temperature in a city called as omikhan and uh, it is in the eastern part of russia and as i said that russia is around 60% of forest and uh, like it is uh, around minus 20 it in the place where i live minus 20 is not a big deal for us so such kind of military caps are quite famous and generally men wear that and this is also one of the uh, posters which show like what is the russian tradition so russia is famous for some kinds of herbal plants and russia is also famous for music and the dolls as i said and also the kitchen which we'll be talking about later so overall uh, russia has got a uh, rich tapestry of traditions art history and it has got some iconic landmarks and also it has got lots of visitors all over the year so this is what russian tea time looks like so russian tea time it generally consists of 
green tea black tea they are fond of that and also they accompany that tea with lots of sweets so one of this chocolate you can see here it is alunka and it is very famous here so it is very sweet chocolate there which they consume generally with lot of bitter uh, tea and generally you must have heard if you if i talk about literary tradition you must have heard about a leo tolstoy and fyodor dostoevsky and pushkin they are one of the most famous authors or writers of russia and also the literature of russia is uh, mostly about the complex themes such as human nature society politics and they reflect different types of countries tumultuous histories and social issues such as uh, the previous histories of war and the previous challenges they had to face then uh, we also can see russian fairy tales so if you guys are uh, like very fond of fairy tales there are lots of fairy tales like aladdin and some similar things uh, are also present in russian history so there is this uh, babka or she is like a magician and uh, she the tradition used to believe that she still exists and she has some superficial or supernatural powers through which we she can heal anyone's disease then uh, some of the traditional dishes that i have eaten many times also are like borscht which is a kind of beetroot soup which is very considered very healthy in russia and we have got some dumplings which are called as pelmeni which i'll be showing in the later picture uh, later later slides and there is blini which are also called as thin pancakes uh so these are some famous uh, russian dishes and these are the different types of candies that are very famous all over the world from russia one of them alunka which i said about with a baby face and music is also one of the important aspect of russia and there are lots of uh, composers just like mozart like the name of them are very complex like tchaikovsky then there is rachmaninov then there is uh, shostakovich etc and they have given spe- specifically classical music and russian folk music is also famous which is characterized by lively melodies and uh, it it is still performed in many festivals and cultural events throughout the country so in the next picture you can see in russian it is give written here snowvim godam so this is how they celebrate uh, their new year and generally the kremlin which is present in moscow it is fully lighted up and they have lots of fireworks at exactly 12 o'clock so russians for russians new year's uh, is considered to be one of the most important holiday and they try try to celebrate that with their families so this is a cartoon which is popular in russia and pakka the word word means goodbye so this is one of the depiction this is the one of the car famous cartoons and in the recent years the russian art and design have given have got popular recognition worldwide and the fashion designers and architects have also gotten to get the challenging conventions and one of the like two of the most important cities of russia are moscow and st petersburg moscow i guess everyone knows but st petersburg maybe not that famous but it is uh, it is one of the most important place because it has all the it has got all the culture and the historical aspects of russia and this is what uh, like a, a kids garden looks like or a kids kindergarten looks like so it is written here the swidanya desh ki saath so the swidanya is a famous word you guys have heard at i hope and it means goodbye but in a formal tone so generally russian russia is a country which doesn't have only russians in it but they also have different types of people like slavic asian european influences from all over the world and they have that is why they have got a unique blend of uh, traditions art music and also literature so uh, this is what i wanted to highlight like russia is famous for its architecture so the churches that they have are orthodox and generally the top of the church or the domes of the church are beautifully intricated by such works which are generally not seen in any of the other countries so they are having this upper hand on architecture for this and also there is a special uh, egg like structure yeah, as you can see here and it so as i said about the picture you guys can see here and also i was talking about this egg shell so this egg shell is a type of uh, small statue which is very famous and it's considered as a souvenir which we can take away from russia when you visit that and it is basically an egg shell and when you open it there is 
egg inside it so it is a traditional statue small statue from, from russia and uh, since education is one of the most important uh, aspect of our life and also about this presentation so i can also talk about some aspects of russian education so generally education is compulsory for children here and uh, generally it is taken from 6 to 15 just like how it is in india so most the, the only different part from india is that uh, in india there is no compulsion of completion of education but in russia with most students they have to complete or they have to continue the secondary education like they just cannot stop till their 12th grade but they have to also do some kind of college or university to make sure that they land up in a job or they start their business and russian uh, this is one of the aspect and also hired this education is highly valued in russian society and many students they also pursue degrees in fields such as engineering medicine and sciences so this is one of the aspect of education i'll be talking about education in detail in the later slides and uh, if we continue talking about tradition so it is deeply rooted in history and folklore and this is again about the dishes uh, like with, there is one of, one of the instrument called as balalaika which i'll be talking about later and about the literature also we have already talked about so in this picture you can see the russian doll that is called as matryoshka so i guess uh, you guys have seen this doll in which the bigger bigger doll it opens and it has got smaller smaller dolls inside it so it is a famous doll in russia so this is what the kremlin it looks like during the snow time and this is one of the dolls so in this slide we are talking about the russian holidays so russian holidays they are generally deeply rooted in the country's history and generally there, there is christianity in the european countries but uh, russia specifically has got orthodox christianity uh, in the terms of religious beliefs so generally for them the most important uh, holidays are christmas and i said new year and also easter which is uh, soon going to come in march end and that's why they celebrated it uh, with their families they cook delicious typical russian food and they uh, enjoy and also there is one important festival which recently happened last week it's called as maslinitsa and it is a week long festival which uh, leads up to the lent that is before easter and in this particular uh, in this particular week they make a uh, pancake of all different types which is called as blin and they celebrate it with music and dancing as well and so talking about russian education so first of all the structure so as i said the structure is almost similar to indian education or the normal education which we have worldwide in terms of the schooling and grade and after that they have to complete the secondary education then if you talk about curriculum so curriculum is mostly standardized and they have subjects talk, uh, like mathematics russian language literature history and geography so the only different thing is that uh, russians they also have english in their schooling but they don't focus much on the english aspect and that is why they are stuck only to russian language and that is why i see that only very few russians they are very fluent in english so it is a drawback also but the good part is that they just respect their uh, mother tongue so much and also about the assessment so like how in india we have the grading system like out of 100 like if you get a score of 95 out of 100 they don't have it like that here they have a unified state exam and the scoring is generally based on how we have in cgpa in india so it's not out of 10 it's out of 5 so if i i'm able to consistently perform well in the classes it sums up to 5 5 5 each and the total score is out of 100 so it is out of 5 the gpa is out considered out of 5 like so the 5 out of 5 is considered good or uh, excellent the 4 out of 5 is considered good like that and they don't fail, like they don't usually fail people like they don't give zero but instead they give two and the two is considered as like you have to repeat that exam or a particular class and the higher education as i said uh, generally the uh, admission in universities is quite competitive and uh, also universities offer a different range of programs like undergraduate and graduate programs in different fields of study and also there are some spe uh, specialized schools so maybe this concept is not so famous in india but it's famous here that a specific school will be just focused on a particular subject for example they have mathematics school or only science school or only uh, language school or only music school such things are not much popularized in india maybe just classes are present but not the schools 
and this is a continuation of the folklore so some uh, form of souvenirs are present in russia which are like handmade dishes which you can hang on the wall so they consider it as a good prosperity aspect so I, almost everyone in their homes have such walls on the uh, such uh, plates on the wall then russian talking about russian cuisine so this is how the pancakes look like they have a special different types of uh, soups like borscht beetroot salad pickled cucumbers and their bread is also different which is a brown bread and it has got all the uh, nutrients inside it and uh, like i'll be sharing more uh, personal pictures so this is what uh, art theater of moscow looks like so they have a good uh, view of architecture which is different and they have such beautiful places where there is greenery and just seeing two rainbows is very uh, popular in russia it's not a uncommon thing and the place where i live volgograd stalingrad uh, also called as stalingrad it has got this monument it has got a hand carrying the fire so it is there 24 by 7 and the soldiers are guarding it so there are lots of uh, like cre- it's like a cremation place for the soldiers who lost their lives in world war so the good part about russia is that they give lot of importance to the soldiers even we give importance but for them they consider their old soldiers like gods and they consider that they have given their lives for protecting the country and they have there are other aspects of russia like there are some uh, old towns which are only like ponds and greenery everywhere this is me and this is a place called elista so this uh, monastery it is like europe second largest monastery so i have been there also this is a special ice cream was from moscow and it is worldwide famous and this is one of the parks photo in uh, stalingrad like uh, volgograd and this is the balalaika which i was talking about so the earliest mention of this instrument it's like a guitar but it's russian guitar and it was originated in 1688 and it has got only three strings uh, so this is uh, like they play uh, on this and they sing song and as i said the uh, christmas is quite famous for and popular here so they generally every city has got a center where they decorate the tree beautifully like this and this is russian metro so if you if you ever come to moscow so they have different they have got lots of metro stations and each metro station is like designed in a different and unique way and this plates which are here they are they are from a, a museum which is situated in st petersburg it is called as the world heritage museum and it is world's second largest museum so if you are interested in museum museums and architecture if you have a were thing for that then you should definitely visit russia and this is a chocolate and this is a russian cat so even the russian cats are fond of the russian chocolates and this is uh, this one, one of the like top 10 statues of the world so where i live volgograd it has got a tall statue called mama of kurgan so she is a lady carrying sword so it is basically a representation of the fact that even a uh, woman were involved in the world war and they were able to sacrifice their lives to like save their country so it is i think eighth or ninth largest statue in the world so this is a statue of mama of kurgan it is uh, like eighth or ninth largest statue and uh, this is in volgograd only yeah so my presentation is over if you guys have any questions about russia you can ask me and also i want to mention important aspect i forgot about education that uh, sir also told me to talk about university education system so i will share a bit about that so the good part is that if we have a strength of around 50 people in our batch they divided it into like five or six people and they form groups of them so you guys have lecture we all have lectures together but when it comes to di- group discussion or you know the teachers actually taking one on one classes they divided into groups and they take the classes so each teacher is able to focus on the five uh, people at once so this is how they teach so thank you uh, surbi for the uh, uh, wonderful presentation we came to know a lot of things about russia which were perhaps read or maybe heard or maybe seen in movies uh, but yeah yesterday um, well uh, having an introductory call I, i was asking you about the ac right so we were all wondering uh, if russia is cold throughout the year but i was surprised when you told me that uh, there are two or three months in russia when it is uh, almost like uh, 35 degrees plus right you mentioned yeah 
Yeah, so that was little surprising because here also we are uh, uh, under severe, uh, you know, uh, heat uh, in Bangalore, a uh, city like Bangalore. So I was little surprised when I saw that. And secondly, I wanted to ask you about the uh, um, Indians. Uh, forget in education, there are a lot of students in education, but are there any Indians uh, who are working there? Maybe in IT industry. How is the IT industry there, uh, or any other industry where Indians are employed? Yes, so in Volgograd where I stay, there there are not many Indians, hardly one or two families are there. So they are actually working in the IT sector. But if I, if you go to Moscow or St. Petersburg or larger cities like that, then people are actually working. Like uh, I have been to uh, embassy, Indian embassy, Spain embassy. So there also Indians are working. Almost all, everyone is Indian. So the IT industry is, uh, uh, how is the IT industry there? Because I recently remember Infosys had opened an office uh, in Moscow, if I'm not mistaken. IT industry is good. Like I have Russian friends who are working in IT industry. So they say that there is not much pressure and they can take work from home anytime. Okay. And there is not like a typical nine to five job. It's yeah. quite chill. Okay, good. Anyway, um, I think I should allow uh, Monica and uh, Ramya to ask questions. Monica is itching to ask you some question. I have only one doubt, ma'am. Like uh, uh, about uh, Russia and Ukraine war, what was the main motive or an as aspect of an Russia to attack on Ukraine? Or what made them to attack on Ukraine? Actually, I don't know much about politics, but uh, since I have got lots of Russian friends, I have heard their point of view. So since they are living here since years and their parents have seen the USSR and Slavic generation. So what they think is that whatever President Putin has done is right because actually they are just trying to protect their country. It's just like a war between two countries and if another country is trying to suppress one, so that one is trying to protect itself and its own uh, you know, uh, people. So he's just trying to protect it and he had no other option but to stop them and that is in a very bad way but he had to do that. Okay, uh, Monica, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the answer to your question uh, can go for minutes together actually. So what uh, Surbi has explained is uh, about their Russian pride but uh, there's a lot of, thing, a lot of uh, politics involved because you know Russia and US were at Cold War, right? So again that is being revived now, Cold War. So uh, Ukraine is trying to get membership to NATO, okay, North Atlantic yeah. Treaty Organization, which Russia does not want. Because if uh, they become uh, members to NATO, then all the American troops and, uh, you know, missiles and so many things will then land in Ukraine and could potentially be a problem for uh, Russia. So they don't want to allow that to happen. And moreover, as uh, Surbi rightly mentioned, all these countries were like part of USSR earlier, you not know, till 1991, before you were born. So I know earlier we used to read books on Russia, it was all about USSR. It was never about uh, one country called Russia. So all these Uzbekistan, you know, the Kazakhstan, so, um, uh, there are so many countries actually, uh, uh, which are not coming to my mind immediately. But there are so many countries which formed USSR. So they still feel that we are, we are just one country when they have broken up and there are now multiple countries after 1991. So, and there are many other theories actually why uh, there is a war, but uh, as she rightly said, it's all about politics end of the day. Uh, it's not that, you uh, know, and moreover, uh, uh, a lot of Russians are in Ukraine, a lot of Ukrainians are in Russia. They are like brothers and sisters and they themselves don't know why they are fighting. That's another strange thing, you know, between them. Surbi, I hope I was right. I don't know. This what I know about, uh, oh, little about Russia uh, history and uh, the war, you know, that's what I've read somewhere. So I don't know whether I'm right or wrong. <laughs> Yes, so you are right. Yeah. Rami, what I know is that they just want to protect their country, so they had to take that step. That's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Ramya, any question from your side? Yes, sir. Sir, in India flag, we, we have uh, each color's uh, meaning, sir. In Russia, they have uh, each color uh, flag meaning. Is there any meaning for the flag she is asking? So we had some classes like history, uh, history of Russia. So in that, uh, our teacher, he tried to explain us similarly how we have Indian flag significance, they also have. So the red stands for, I think, the blood which they have sacrificed for their country. The white stands similar to like India is for peace. And the blue, I think it stands for sky, like there is no limit to the sky. So this is how he explained to us. 
okay is there any scope on uh, chemistry field like um uh, uh, preparing tablets and uh, you mean pharmacy like, uh, uh, pharmacy you mean yeah. pharmacy is there any scope yeah there is great scope like one of my uh, pharmacology teachers she is quite renowned here so she told us that uh, they are they like all they have conferences every like 2 3 months so that they can you know produce lots of different types of medicines so the good part is that russia they don't try to export uh, or import any kind of uh, pharmaceutical uh, things they do, they do everything on their own like if the production is their own so there is lots of scopes of uh, you know studying here or going into research what kind of government is uh, russia ka uh it is uh, democratic i think so recently there were elections in russia where uh, you know 83% yeah, of the 83% of the votes went to putin and uh, you know so uh, the democracy is not like in india right so that democracy is controlled democracy you can say like it's a monarchy <laughs> yeah, democracy it is now. it is a controlled democracy so we can't call it a purely democratic country you know so uh, there is a one man uh, who is putin uh, who is uh, almost like a, a leader you no know, one man uh, god father yeah. Uh, yeah leadership and people uh, look at him like god so that is the uh, situation there in russia uh, so there are lots of shops and even lots of places where they put uh, putin's photo and they have put garland around his uh, yeah. like photo so yeah. they consider him as god as god well. yeah so that is the difference in indian russia. i have a question sir Yeah. like uh, is there any place or uh, is there any place that uh, indians or other countries people are restricted is there any place okay you are asking me in russia no sir akka sir akka, akka okay akka means sister huh, by the way so she is calling you elder yeah, sister yeah yeah, yeah. i understand yeah, so. <laughs> in marathi also you say akka yeah yeah please go ahead a uh, restriction i don't think so because i am being in indian i am still here without any problem so i don't think so there are any restrictions for indians whatever i have known uh, uh, monica uh, russia um, is a very friendly country actually now let's not look at politics and all that but then russia is a very friendly country whoever has gone there i have not i've never been there to this country that's one country i've not been there but i've heard that the people are very uh, friendly i think there was a quiz uh, a couple of weeks ago right where i mentioned about uh, if somebody um, eats their food you know completes the plate and immediately the host will come and yeah. fill fill the plate so they are so friendly so hospitable people right right not like the general europeans you know they have and they and they love indians okay you didn't ask about hindi movies they are very popular there you know hindi movies and all they love uh, indians they love indian movies um, even even government to government also we have friendly relations with russia by the way yeah and uh, they love indian okay. food also you know if i'm uh, they have uh, some indian restaurants also in moscow i'm not sure about uh, um, yeah. uh, volgograd but in moscow they have lot of indian restaurants yeah even in volgograd we have one indian restaurant but if you go to moscow st petersburg there are lots of indian restaurants and yeah. people are fond of food yeah the only thing is they can't handle so much spice <laughs> but they make it in a very mild way yeah their currency is ruble by the way r o r o u b l e they use rubles and we also have uh, rupee yeah. ruble trade with them we don't trade with them in uh, us dollars so there is one country yeah. where we trade in local currency rupees and ruble especially oil you know we purchase lot of oil from russia and we pay them in uh, rupees and when they import from us they pay us in uh, rubles so yeah So this is the only country where I think Iran. And there is not much a difference in the currency. Like yeah. one rupee is yeah. almost one point zero zero some. Correct. Rupees, not more than one. Or yeah. Is there any product which is uh, uh, produced and exported to other countries from Russia? Yeah, like how Sir said, oil. Their oil export is one of the largest business, and I think also some uh, petroleum products like related to oil. because they have lots of sunflower plants so maybe sunflower related products sunflower oil 
and i think but potato export is also high here potato coal and other minerals i think russia also has the longest uh, railway track right uh, from uh, vladivostok to uh, riga or some place iberian no? railway yeah, yeah very it's the longest railway in the world akka have you been all around uh, russia have you yeah, visited all the about to be all or fortunately almost all the russia have discovered except for two three cities not uh, siberia also Siberia, I had a plan, but I couldn't go. Except for that, I have been to other cities, which are like famous ones. Okay. This I I take the opportunity to thank you, uh, Surbi. It was a uh, really a wonderful session, as I said earlier, um, and I'm sure both uh, uh, Monica and Ramya have enjoyed and uh, also got enlightened. And perhaps you never know, they might even land in Russia for further education because Russia Russian government is encouraging Indian students. to come there the visa process is also very simple is what i heard uh, only thing is yeah the cost uh, i don't know how uh, it compares with the indian uh, uh, education system i mean from the cost point of view but overall a uh, lot of students are preferring uh, to go to russia today especially medicine and uh, and whatever we have told us about your education system there it is quite different from what we have in india especially on the practical aspects you know it's more like experiential kind of uh, studies that you have not focus too much on marks Uh, or percentage, but more on uh, the practicality of you know what you learn there. So that is uh, uh, one of the you know differentiator I see between uh, India and uh, uh, Russian education system. So thank you once again, uh, Surbi, and uh, hopefully uh, we should have more such sessions from you, you know on different topics in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.